Hello, everybody. Uh, I you wish you are having a really good time today in uh, this month, user meeting in Hungary. Uh, it's my second time being here. The first time was uh, in uh, 2011. I had a great experience that time, and I think so many of you might have been there. Uh, today, I will speak about Microtik use in the industrial environment. I have finished studying the university in Tirana, and I had an informatic diploma. Uh, I have different experience in uh, different companies. I have my own ISP back home. Uh, we work mostly on wireless, so I have a lot of experience in the wireless. We also ho offer a solution for the problems in the networks of our customers, but mostly wireless. Uh, I only begin to get certified and uh, the knowledge in Migrotic this year, so I got the certified in uh, MPCNA and so on. And uh, I hope to be a trainer. So another thing is the we are working on fiber opticals. Nowadays the the market is almost going in fiber. So from two years and now we are expanding our network in an area that we didn't cover before. But let's talk about industrial environment. We, I have uh, chosen some project we have done in our country. Um, and the biggest, one of the biggest in our country and abroad also, one of the biggest uh, is uh, the project uh, that I'm going to show you. This project is in South Italy and the client are asked to us to, to have uh, control of these big machines. You know, the locomotive, they go on railway and uh, sometimes they need to be controlled by uh, this Siemens PLLC, but not locally, but remotely. So to control these machines, we wanted to use Microtik equipment and uh, we used the uh, Omnitik 5. Mm, that time with a USB 3G K and all the network is in a VPN network. Uh, nowadays we have the LTRP mini kit of the Microtik that is much more better, but Still now, that Omnitik is work perfectly. It is only for emergency purpose uh, to, to make some emergency, for example, in this case, to turn off the machine. Uh, another project that we are proud of is the Terminal of Container project is in Albania, in our country, uh, Duros, the country where I am from. My colleague talked talk a, a little bit about it before. Uh, you can see the customer asked us that the uh, workers on the terminal needs to have some uh, control information of the uh, <coughs> of all this stuff. So they had the, these terminals, Motorola one, on their hands, and they tried to control the time the date of the embarking of the, ter of the containers and uh, something else. Uh, everything was connected to a central server and everything is by wireless. So they don't need it anymore to go by foot and to check uh, the containers, but with uh, that terminal they can set commands for the numbers and uh, everything else. This is a very good project. I can send you much more details and we can talk after the moon if you want. Uh, working on all this environment, I mean the industrial one, uh, makes us uh, normally think that this is a robust environment and we don't, ca we can't use simple 
equipment like the normal office and normal networks. You have, we have much more specified rules to do this project. But first let me show a project that we have just finished now. It is another big project. And uh, we started from what the customer needs. This customer I'm talking about is a customer that has a container field and also a Chrome field. It's a big company and uh, they use to storage the container and the Chrome too and after that to move them on different uh, countries. They also have a covered warehouse and uh, as I show you here in the photo, you can see this uh, company field. Uh, with the red one, it is the containers department. With the gray, it is the Chrome department. And with the yellow, it is the warehouse covered that also used for containers. With the blue uh, point there, they are the main office. And from there, we can we will start everything. If you want, you can start scan the QR code and be deported directly to that location. Uh, the client asked us to make a surveillance system on all over this area. Also, it asked to make some wireless coverage, but not only for not for Facebook or Instagram, but for providing more uh, reasonable, productive, productive reason, I mean for getting connected to the main office and to the main servers. And also <laughs> phone communication between different points and the fire alarm on the covered warehouse. This is 108,000 uh, meter square area to be covered. At the first time, I was very, we were very afraid of this uh, area, and we didn't know how to do it. But step by step, we sat down and we begin to <coughs> separate these area in different areas. I mean, the container one, the covered wave house, the storage of the field. And uh, the most important thing was of all this project well, was that you have to do this all in wireless. Because the company was under working and uh, everything was finished, you, we couldn't put fiber or we couldn't put uh, wired over there. So how to do this in wireless? Uh, First of all, we have to choose the right equipment <coughs> based on uh, APUS, switches, routers, etc. And we have done, I have done an uh, equipment list of what we use in this uh, project. Uh, you, we can start from the band we use here. We use 5 gigahertz and you know it is better than in 2 gigahertz. And you might know from your experience the differences. <coughs> also, the terminals of the staff have uh, have their have their terminals. The staff have their terminals here in five gigahertz, so we use them. Uh, all this equipment is put it on the main office and also in the poles around the area. We have make uh, direct links and everything is uh, organized in the main router board 4011 in the main office. Of course, we wanted to try these 60 gigahertz links. It's a new one from Mycotic. So we thought to try that for better throughput and it works great. This is the scheme on how we you did with this project. From, so from the main tower of the main offices, we put uh, three man box to cover the three different areas and put on every pole a uh, CXT and also the man box for the coverage of the area. 
Also, the 60 gigahertz link is to, from the main office to the wave house. <coughs> there are, in total, 17 pools, poles, and as I said, they are all connected to the main office with three man box, three for one for each area to have better bandwidth and uh, more stability on the usage. Uh, you can see here, this is another photo from the field uh, showing up uh, the poles. On the bottom of them, we have put uh, this metal case, and uh, from there, we power up everything on the poles. It is a POA switch of Microtik, like I show you in the equipment. It was uh, the CRS 112 with eight ports. It is used for powering up all the equipment in the towers and also to power up the cameras. They are in 48 volts, but this equipment of Microtik has uh, two power supplies, also in 48 volt, and it's very good to be used. Uh, for the main office, we opted for the 4011 router core, and also a PoE 40, uh, 24 port switch, Microtik, that is uh, one of the best solutions and we often use. Uh, we powered everything in the main tower with that switch. And uh, it, this is also 24 and 48 volt. Uh, but when we first were in the office, we saw that the network was, uh, had a lot of problems, so we, we had to begin from from the network. I mean, you have to do something to, as you can see in the photo, it is very terrible here. Some problems was also the shoes, bottles, everything. And after the first makeup, here we go, a uh, good workable rack. In the main towers, in the main tower, we have uh, put three man boxes, totally three, to cover the different area, and also the wire dish of 60 gigahertz. Uh, the man boxes, they are 120 degree, and also we use them in the poles for better coverage of wireless. In the in the pools, in the poles, we have uh, put uh, 17 SXT light to get connected uh, to the main office, also the mount boxes, and as I said you before, they are powered by this PoE switch, and uh, we put here also the, the cameras. All this network we will see later will be in a big bridge, uh, so that the camera can communicate with the NVR. This is part of the configuration we are talking later. So after the tower, the equipment we used in the warehouse, um, there are four pieces of uh, man boxes. You see this warehouse and you might think why are we using four pieces, but for now, it is empty. When it, it gets full of containers, it might be very difficult with the, for the workers to get connected. So four pieces is more, more better, much more better to, be, to cover all the area. We put here the four gigahertz dish and the eight camera all over the wave house. Also the 24 port switch to light up everything. Let's put, after we have put all together, <coughs> let's see some configuration, so how we configured all this stuff. Uh, the main idea is this. We did a, a big bridge to put all the cameras uh, to get co connected with the MVR. 
And uh, the wireless was put in a Capsman configuration uh, controlled by the router board 4011. So we divided the wireless connectivity from the uh, other part of the network that is in uh, bridge. How to do that? Uh, one thing very important that I suggest uh, is to upgrade all the devices in the latest router OS versions and also to do some uh, security things about admin rights and users. Some presenter here talked a lot about security, so I'm not going to say much more. And uh, we begin to do our network. The first uh, configuration in the main office is to create, as I said, the, the, the bridge. We don't do any, do much more. We just put uh, the ports, the VLAN ports and the Ethernet ports on a bridge that is the main bridge of the CAPS and also configure the wireless SSID with security for this network to be more secure. You can see here with a simple seven or eight lines of commands, we are just creating a bridge and adding every interface, internet and ports on that bridge. From that, we configure the point-to-point -point links of the tower. Almost it is the same configuration. The only things that change uh, are write it with red. You can see the IP address and uh, the radio name and everything else is almost the same like the first slide, like the main upper office. For those that are not common with common interface, this is a simple thing. We can do it just uh, win, wi with Winbox, the point-to-point -point links just put the mod in station and you get connected. After we finish that configuration, we go to the access point uh, m registration to see the towers. You can see they are connected. Here are four towers, four, sorry, four pools, poles. Uh, one of the access point, another one is uh, with nine, and there is another one with four. In total, six, 17 uh, poles connected together with these three access points. Uh, another thing we have to configure is the access points in the towers. The access points get connected via the SXT with the access point, with the main access point. And just we put uh, those two interfaces <coughs> in bridge so they can uh, get in the same network. Uh, configuration of the main router board. In the main router board, we created the bridge for the Ethernet to connect to the network. And uh, we, cre we created this uh, bridge wireless client for the Capsman wireless client. And we configure, configure Capsman in this bridge. This is everything we do in the router board 4011. And uh, my colleague before talked about uh, Capsman, so here is the lines that's gonna configure the router board. I'm not gonna talk much more about it, but just say that you can with just five lines of command, you can configure Capsman. It's very simple. You can take these lines and use in your configuration. It's almost the same. It doesn't change much more. Uh, after we've we configure the Capsman, we 
see in the CAPS interface, the registration table, we see all the clients that are connected and uh, we can see different uh, information about those clients, data rates, package, everything. There are almost 50 clients connected and that are managed by these CAPSmen. Uh, other so we finished doing the tower connecting to the main office and the IP given to the wireless and stuff that are moving. All the camera are on the bridge and get connected to each other. The only thing that we had still to do is to configure the uh, 60 gigahertz links that by default comes in bridge mode. Uh, Everything else, we did. The equipment, I wanted to say something about the equipment. The equipment uh, in this industrial environment has to be very uh, strong. I mean, you, you cannot opt for the cheaper ones. You have to choose uh, good equipment because uh, the, it is a harsh environment. Uh, they work in uh, rain, in... Uh, uh, dust and so the equipment has to be very good so we have to be careful on what equipment we are choosing and uh, another important thing is the monitoring one thing that I always do in this installation especially in industrial one we put all the equipment in monitor a special tool is CACTI. I, I think many of you know it. And it has a lot of templates about MicroTIC. So why we use CACTI to monitor all this work we have done and uh, to see how it's going. The CPU, for example, here or the voltage here with this graphic and also the wireless registration client of the Capsman. This is a very good tool, so <laughs> it's good to use it. Uh, as a conclusion, I can say that in this year, all this year using MicroTip equipment, they have uh, proved themselves also in industrial environment. They are very robust and very good. They offer with the price they have and uh, this strong, they offer a very good solution. Also, monitoring is not just a choice, but it is a must. And uh, for this critical environment, be, I mean, choose the right equipment for not, for this, for your projects. Thank you for your attention. If you got any question, please tell me. <laughs>